FeatureCam 2013 now has the ability to do probing. The probing within FeatureCam runs as an add-in. FeatureCam probing is aimed at providing a solution for automated lights-out manufacturing of feature-rich parts. After doing the probing, the post requires some customization to take advantage of the probing sequences. So how does it work? Well, the user creates standard machining features, just as they would do if they were using FeatureCam on a normal basis. We then take these machining features and combine them with various 2.5D probing cycles that already exist on the machine. These could include webs and pockets, bosses and bores, corners and surface points. Once those probing items are measured, the machining program can then make an in-process decision based on those probing results. So the probing types that are supported, currently there are five main categories of probing feature types. We have a web, pocket or obstructed pocket, a corner inside or corner outside with either two or four points, boss, bore or obstructed bore, a radial boss, radial bore or radial obstructed bore with one, two or four points, and a single surface measurement. We also use the protected positioning, so when we are moving the probe to a position, we will check that we don't get a collision. And we also use the spin probe on and spin probe off commands. The note at the bottom there indicates that the Renishaw routine numbers have been given as examples, but other manufacturers can be used. So for example, if we did a pocket type operation, we would call a 9812 macro. We would use the 9810 to protect the tool as we move to position, and we would spin the probe on with a 9832 and spin it off with a 9833. But these are only Renishaw examples, and we could use other manufacturers if they're available on the controller. So let's look at a probing application. In this example, we're going to measure an engine block bore. So the first operation will be machining the bore itself. We will then bring the probe in to check the bore and update the tool offset based on the size of the bore. After that up offset update, we can then make a manufacturing decision. If the feature passes, we can then move on to the next machining operation. If the feature fails and is too small, we can remachine and recheck the bore and continue this process until the feature passes. If the feature fails and is too big, we can abort the process and go to the end of the program. This then saves any unnecessary machining. So let's look at an example. So here we have a four-cylinder engine block and in this case we wish to machine the orange faces which represent the bores. Now we have a cast stock so there is no material on the inside of these bores. So what I want to do is just do a finish machining operation down inside these. So I'm going to select the first orange face. I'm going to go and create a side operation using interactive feature recognition. Select that side face and I'm going to go ahead and accept the defaults on that feature but I'm just going to turn off the rough pass and under the tool selection I'm going to select a 50mm high tool and accept. So I've now created my boring operation to machine inside there under the strategy I'm just going to change it to be a helical type side finish and apply a pitch. Preview that toolpath. If I play that all the way down and just turn off the shading, you should be able to see a helical finish all the way down through the component. So that's created my initial machining operation. Let's go ahead and modify the name. So I'm going to call this one Bore 1. Say OK. Move that up in the sequence and under the priority, I'm going to change its priority, I'm going to make this priority number 3, set apply. So if we go ahead and play our centerline simulation for our entire NC code sequence, we see we get our face build and then we get our boring operation. 
So if we want to machine the subsequent bores, the subsequent orange faces, what we want to do is to be able to adjust for any kind of uh, change in the tool size. And we can use the probing to allow us to do this. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and create a boss bore type measurement uh, inside this uh, bore operation. So I'm going to create a new feature wizard, I'm going to select user, choose next and note that the add-in has already been loaded. So we have the DLL that's inside the uh, default feature cam install folder and you can see in this case I've already loaded the add-in which allows me to choose some of these operations. So I'm going to choose measure boss bore. Feature type, well this is a bore not a boss, so I'm going to swap the feature type to be a bore and choose set and you should be able to see a blue preview appearing in the centre of the screen. I'm going to change the probe direction, so we're going to choose an XY to give us our four point measurement and then I want to update the size. Now I've already created a circle at the centre position of this bore, so I'm going to select the diameter and using the picking option I'm going to say same as and then pick this bore like so. So in this case we've got a diameter of 86 millimeters. Say OK. That's updated the size. I'm going to update the measure height, so in this case I'm going to set this to 5, so we're not quite as deep. And then finally we have the update option, so this basically specifies what I wish to change. Now looking down the options I can change the machine coordinate system, so I could change a location uh, and update the G54. Uh, I can update the tool, so this would be, in, in our case, updating the tool offset, or I can store that value, or I can print it. So I'm going to select Tool, and set that, and then the parameter, um, in this case, needs to be the tool number. So we can do this by going to the Manufacturing Tool Mapping. Note that the end mill that I've chosen is in position number 2, so I'm going to say Update Tool Number 2. Go to the next page, this allows me to choose the location, Quite obviously we're going to go for that centre of the circle, so there's the position. Next again we have our tool selection, so in this case I've chosen a Renishaw uh, M4 Fitment Stylus, 100mm long uh, by 6mm ball radius. Uh, I'm just going to update the simulation speed, in this case uh, I'm going to set the feed rate to be 100mm per minute, uh, but the actual feed rate will be dictated by the macro itself. Uh, we get a summary, I'm just going to say finish preview that toolpath. We should see the probe comes into position, so we can see in this case we've got a holder which is a uh, an MP700 probe, and if I do Alt F3 we should see the probe moving into position, like so. So playing through the entire sequence, I'm just going to move this up into uh, uh, above the uh, grouping that I've got below there. I'm just going to set its base priority to be 4, set this value, apply, and then play the whole sequence. Now if I go to the NC code, scroll all the way down, and you should see that we have the probing sequence at the bottom here. So in this case we have the macro to turn the probe on, 9832. We protect as we move to safe. We then have the macro call for the actual measurement. In this case, we are updating our tool offset uh, with the bore operation. We then protect the probe as we move again. And then finally, we uh, turn the probe off. And then we go to N999, which is the end of our program. However, all we've done is measured and then updated the tool offset for any subsequent uh, machining operations. However, uh, this doesn't really help us on the, the first bore that we've created. So although we can update the tool offset to uh, give us where values uh, for subsequent operations, we still need to make a decision based on the first bore that we machined. So we can do this by adding some, uh, some logic and some decisions into the uh, posted output. So I'm going to start off by creating a label position. So I want a label to instigate uh, where the start of this sequence begins. Now in this case I've already created uh, a series of part library items. So I've got a start label. I'm just going to paste this, paste it into the current setup and say finish. I'm going to move this up uh, to above the bore operation. And in this case, it's just simply a, a toolpath, NC code entry, so we've just done the add NC code text. And all I've said is start bore number one, 
I've then set a parameter, in this case hash 101 is equal to zero. So this is going to be my counter to allow me to count how many times I've done this toolpath sequence. We then put a label in for the uh, a block number, in this case N11. So uh, the other thing we just need to check is our priority. In this case we set it to be two. So we have the face operation first and then the start label uh, gets inserted. So again let's run through our se sequence, look at the NC code and we can see start bore one machining sequence. So we set our counter or reset our counter and then enter a block number. So now I need to add some decision criteria and again I'm going to go to my construction part library and you'll notice that we've got our bore analysis. So I'm going to paste this into the current setup, move this just below our boss bore measurement into the bore analysis and again this is an NC code text sequence uh, but this time we've got a lot more detail in this particular sequence. So what I'm going to do is again play the NC code and just look at the decisions. So let's open the NC code tab, just zoom in. So we start our bore operation, so bore 1 machining sequence. We then have hash 101 equals 0 and then N11, so that's the start of the program sequence. We then do our bore measurement, so we run our probing sequence and then we get into our decision sequence. So I'm just going to highlight uh, the entire sequence that we've added. So we start at the begin decision sequence and then we have a block number, in this case N12 is inserted at the base. So let's have a look at what we've added. So we set the bore size and tolerance initially, so that's covered by this region here. So we set temporary parameters, hash 102 is equal to 86, so that's the diameter of our bore. We then set our difference value, so we uh, take that 102 and we subtract the value that would have been obtained from this 9814 macro. In this case, this is stored in hash 510. And once we get that value, we have uh, this hash 103, so that is our difference value. We then set a tolerance and put this in temporary uh, position, uh, hash 104, and in this case I've set this to be 0.1 of a millimetre. So we now have our decisions. So decision number one basically states that if our uh, difference value is less than our tolerance value, then we go to position 12. So block number 12, if I scroll down, we can see N12, and we just simply continue machining. Uh, however, if we uh, uh, have to skip this, so we can go to decision number two. So we can say if our uh, uh, hash 103 is less than zero, so this basically means that our difference value is less than zero, so uh, it is effectively uh, a negative number, go to 13. So we go to 13, and in this case N13 we deprint, uh, in this case diameter is too big. So the diameter is too big, we print a warning and then we simply say go to 999 which aborts the program and goes to the program end, N999 being here. Now the key thing you'll notice as we're jumping uh, to these go to positions, the sequence numbers uh, do not have to be uh, in sequence, we just simply scan through the program to find that particular block number and then we move from that position. So this is one of the beauties of the FANUC code. The final uh, decision that we could make is if decision 1 and 2 are skipped then our final decision is to uh, go ahead and increment that count number so we have started off with 0 we've then added 1 so we've now got uh, hash 101 is equal to 1 so that then satisfies this next uh, option which is if hash 101 is equal to 1 we go to 11 so that means we scroll all the way back up to our program we go to block number 11 and we run through the machining sequence Again, we can go through the measuring. Uh, once we get through back to decision number one, decision number two, if we have to skip those two decisions, we again increment this value. Uh, by the time we increment this value, it is no longer equal to one. So we skip the go to line. So we only do one iteration of this process. We then deprint the diameter is still too small. And again, we go to 999 and end the program. So we're always trying to make a decision to prevent uh, doing any kind of unnecessary machining. We can continue this sequence and you'll notice if you go to the uh, uh, these group features you'll see there are bores 2, 3 and 4. I can turn those on 
and in this case I'm just going to do a uh, 3D machining operation so I'm going to do a single step just to establish my stock and I'm going to step through so just using my Alt F3 we have our facing operation we have our first boring operation so I'm just going to play this to the next operation probe comes in probes our bore we update the tool offset based on that bore operation and then we make the decision is it okay can we move on to the next one if so we again step through the same sequence I can play that through come in probe continue to update the tool offset make the decision and move on so again probe update the tool offset make the decision can we move on we get to our final boring operation and then our final probing so that's our part machined we can then check the results just look at the NC code and in this case I've used 1-1 for bore number 1 scrolling down you can see we've got 2-1 for bore number 2 scrolling down 3-1 for bore number three and then finally four one for bore number four and again just using the numbered sequences and updating the go to statements to use those uh, values uh, and then keeping that, that value associated with the bore number I'm trying to machine so we've gone all the way through the machining sequence we've allowed uh, the process to make decisions as it's going along and prevent us unnecessarily machining the part uh, and giving us plenty of warning uh, to uh, verify the part as we're going through so to summarize this probing can be used for a number of different scenarios it can be used for checking the presence of the correct part or fixture so we could probe for example dowel holes or pins or known positions on the part or fixture to check that we have the correct part loaded we can check features and set tool offsets we can even go ahead and change the tool if we feel the offset update hasn't worked we can also check the material extent to optimize the tool paths so for example we can go in and check the amount of stock that exists on a part and then adjust the toolpath passes to make sure that we have an optimized process we can have a recutting operation or we can abort the process or we can have any combination of the above the prerequisites for this of course include some kind of probing routine for example the Renishore inspection plus or a similar probing routine that's located on the controller and of course you require a probing system that it installed and calibrated this concludes this demonstration for all more information visit www.featurecam.com or contact your local Dalcam support office that can provide more information on the Featurecam probing